Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a Husqvarna 55 chainsaw. The customer complaint is that it starts fine, but it loses power in the cut, and if he shuts it off warm, he can't restart it. So right away some thoughts go through my head, and one of them is a um, scored cylinder. Uh, that customer complaint lines up really good with a with a scored cylinder. Piston gets hot, rings uh, stick in the groove of the piston, and you lose compression. So you lose power, and warm restart is nearly impossible. We uh, take a look inside the fuel tank, you know, our, our standard checks, nothing to see in there. We're going to take a look inside the cylinder and see if it is scored or not. Spark plug looks uh, a little rich, a little wet. The rope pulls kind of hard. So I can't really see too much for damage in the cylinder. Um, I want to get a compression reading just to see. You know, the guy said it starts good. Let's see what kind of compression we have. When you're doing this test, choke open, as much throttle open as you can get. Pull it till the needle stops rising. 145 pounds of compression. Not bad. So now I'm kind of curious and I'm looking in the cylinder again. Pulls hard. So things on the surface don't really add up. It pulls over hard, and that could be something in the clutch. Could be a crank bearing. It has good compression, and I'm having a hard time seeing any scoring on the cylinder wall. So we're going to take the muffler off and take a look inside and see what there is to see. Unfortunately, there's a support plate on the muffler studs. And to get the muffler off, we'll have to debar this thing and get one screw out of the way. Crap, it's got that extra screw in there. Son of a gun. Uncomfortable silence. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Hey, sometimes making these videos can be uh, a bit of a challenge. So we're going to debar this thing. Is that even a word? Debar? Unbarificate. Dechainification. Still pulls Thing hard. still pulls hard. It looked like that clutch was dragging the drum just a little bit. That's not our problem. So let's get this uh, last bolt out of the support plate so we can get that muffler off and take a closer look inside. And what do we see? Well, it looks like all we really see here is a, a dark hole. Let's get some light on it. Yeah, roachification. 
It's scored. The piston took the brunt of the damage. You know, I couldn't see a lot of cylinder damage. So, you know, this might have the potential for just a piston. Uh, the way it was really deeply scored in that one spot. You know, I have seen guys that have taken the spark plug out, put a screwdriver through the spark plug hole into the piston, exhaust port, I'm sorry, and then used it as a piston stop and had problems because they put a ding in the cylinder that stood a little bit proud and the piston caught it. Cripes. And you ended up with damage like this. I'm not saying that's what happened here, but... It looked like that. So now what do we do? We have a saw that needs a lot of work. It's an older saw. And we're not fixing it at this point. So we're going to write this up with a minimum labor charge. This was a 10 minute video before I started editing it. So I got 10 minutes of time into this repair. Or whatever you want to call it. And... Um, we have a minimum labor charge set that I'll bill him. Now, he'll have the option of paying that labor charge and taking his saw and walking away. Or buying a new saw and we'll eat the labor charge and keep his old saw. Uh, that, those are his options. Now, you have to decide if you are a, a one-man band or if you're managing and setting labor rates at a store. You got to decide, you know, what your policy is going to be on minimum labor rates. If the dollar amount for minimum labor is high, there's going to be a lot of people that won't even drop their equipment off. Now, there might be reasons for you to set it high. Maybe all of your operation is indoors and you have limited storage space. And the reason I say that is if your minimum labor rate is a little bit lower, a lot of people tend to just pay the minimum labor and walk away from the saw now you have to hold that saw store it and sell parts enough parts off of it to recover your minimum labor which is easy to do and it and it helps a lot of people out in a bind when you don't have new parts for their older saw and the way things have been going lately in the last year or so holding on to some used parts isn't really a bad idea so that's all I got for you on the Husqvarna 55 uh, low power situation and my thoughts on minimum labor rates. Thanks for watching. Later.